you guys, Mason escaped. But this time he escaped at the lake. Our cat wants to be an outdoor cat and he's doing everything he can. He took advantage of a weak moment that I had when Sadie was sick in the middle of the night and he went bolting right on by. Yeah, I called Mason a name. He's a butthead. He, he took advantage of me when I was trying to take care of Sadie and he bolted out the door at two o'clock in the morning. And there he is, he's living at the lake. He is on vacation right now. He's enjoying the wildlife and uh, life of a cat. He's hanging tight though. He's hanging right near the cabin. He's living under the shed and he's climbing trees and chasing everything. There's so many chipmunks and gophers for him to chase. I hope he doesn't catch any of them, but then again, he needs a food source. And we can't put cat food to lay it out in the woods because there's so many creatures we live in track. And there's been many, many, many bear sightings with mama bears with their bear cubs. So the last thing we want to put out is cat food because we have bobcats and lynx, we have coyotes. Oh yeah, raccoons, just saw one of those the other day. We don't want to attract these animals and feed them. So Mason, you're gonna have to feed yourself. And I know he can catch things. I've watched him catch and eat things. So Mason's an avid hunter. He's on vacation at the lake, and I'll tell you more of the story here. Here's what happened. Come here, Sadie. My uh, older lab, she, she's getting to be 13. She's getting, well, she turned 13, so she's not getting to be. <laughs> Screaming kitten. Yep, I'm back in the big city here. Um, anyway. Yes, it's not your fault. It's okay. So, in the middle of the night at the lake cabin last weekend, Sadie started panting heavily for no reason. It was a cool, cool night. There was a heavy breeze blowing through the cabin. It was, I was almost too cold. I put a second layer of blankets on myself. And I woke up suddenly to her panting hard. And sometimes she'll do that if she has to go to the bathroom and she's too polite to wake me up and bark and say, hey, I need to go out and pee. Come here, Sadie. And so she, was panting heavily so I put her out I, I just let her out and thought she'd go to the bathroom and she did a little bit it wasn't much so I thought well uh, maybe she's got stomach troubles or maybe her blankets on her bed are too hot I don't know um, so I cooled her off I felt her ears they weren't hot at all and then I listened to her heart put my head right on her chest and listen dog's hearts beat irregularly so that's kind of shocking to me I'm not used to hearing that but on dogs it's normal anyway uh, so I went back to bed thinking that well she aired out she used the bathroom she should be fine she started panting even more heavily and I'm starting to think is she having a heart attack or a stroke so I was very worried about Sadie at 2 o'clock in the morning and the cats were in bed and everyone else is in bed and Sadie was getting worse. So I got very worried. I laid on the living room floor with Sadie and I spent some time with her, just checking her over, seeing if everything seems okay. She was panting heavier than this. And we're outside right now on, this, on a summer day. She's been in the sun and playing a little bit. So this is normal during the day, but at night she never pants, not unless she's sick. And so I let her out a second time. And this time I wanted to see exactly what she did when she got outside because if she has stomach problems uh, I'd be able to see that she was having trouble so and she didn't she went and stood in the middle of the yard and stood there and panted and it was pretty cool out it was like in the 50s and so in my worried state I wasn't careful and the screen door was open and I didn't shut the screen part because I can't really see through it at night and Mason went bolting right on by me. He ran down by the, the entry to our dock where there, there's an opening, there's a, like a walkway with a path. He ran to that, looked back at me like, ha, as if to say, I'm free and I'm gonna go play. You, you go to bed and he kind of gave me a reassuring look like, I'm fine, I just wanna go out and explore. Well, I didn't like that, but you know, if you chase after him, he won't come back he won't come back near the house or the door. So I just, I stayed silent. And then I called him gently. I said, 
Mason, come here. You know, and I use the sounds that like that, and <laughs> silly as it is, but it works for him. Usually it means I'm gonna feed him. And then I grabbed his bowl and put a few kernels of food in there, shook it. It's made of metal so he can hear it from far away. Nope, he ran off, he was gone. Not like gone like he ran away into the woods, but more like uh, he ran off behind some trees and bushes. So I was more concerned with Sadie. I thought, well, I'm not gonna go hunting for a cat in the middle of the night with that I won't catch, because I guarantee you, you won't catch Mason. Once he gets his mind to it, he leaves. And so um, I wanted to not ignore Sadie. So I brought Sadie back in and spent some time with her, uh, reassured her, and to this moment, I don't know what was wrong, but my hunch is that her dog bed is kind of a new arrangement. It has thicker blankets for more padding for her elbows because she's getting old and arthritic. And I think maybe it was just too much padding and foam and that was keeping the body heat. So I had her lay on the, just straight on the floor on the carpet in the living room where the breeze was really blowing through there. And I had her just lay down there and relax. And I sat up with her for a while and her panting decreased and she went to sleep. So then I went and crawled into bed. I figured, well, Mason will be waiting at the door at 5 a.m. when the sun starts to come up. And so I got back up at 5 a.m., looked for Mason. Uh, Co Coho was sitting in the window. He could hear Mason in the woods, so Coho was watching. But luckily, Coho has no interest in being out in the woods. So in the morning, now it's 5 a.m., and um, Sadie is sleeping well on the floor, not in her nice cushy blankets because it was too hot for her. And so I was happy with that. And I could see from Coho that he heard Mason out in the woods. Mason was sticking close by. So roll up to the next few days, we are, all of our family members would quietly go out and just sit. Amanda especially would sit in the grass, with some cat food and be ready to throw it out. We don't want to lay cat food all around the lake because there's something like bears that will come and chick chipmunks and gophers and red squirrels and coyotes and there's eagles and owls and hawks and there's um, bobcats around the area, lynx. So no, we don't want to attract all these friends to our yard. So we're not going to throw cat food around. But we, uh, we did put a bowl of cat food on our front porch by our front door. And um, he didn't come up and eat that for two days. But we saw Mason under the pine tree where he was hunting. He would look over at us and, and like he was just tuned us out and he was focused on anything that moved. He's in his glory out at the lake outside. He's been looking out the windows for three years there wishing that he could be out there. Well, he's out there and he's hunting. And apparently he's getting things to eat because he, he didn't care about his cat food. He's probably eating better things. Now, I don't like setting cats free and letting them roam around and eat birds. However, that's what Mason wants. He's got that in his blood. He was born outside. He's, in his mind, he's an outside cat that loves people. And um, so we tried. We've been trying very hard. Kate still, well, she lives at the lake, so she can check on him every day. And in the last few days, she's been texting back to me, telling me that she's seeing a lot of Mason and that the rabbits don't live under the deck anymore or under the, or the deck or the shed. And I don't like letting rabbits live under the shed. I was gonna put some fencing up to stop that, some wire. But yeah, that's, that's where he's hanging out. So when the storms rolled in, and I'll show you some clips of, of the storms at the end of this, I'm gonna time-lapse the cloud movements. It's really cool. Anyway, um, so that's an update from us. A uh, couple other updates. Well, let me let me finish first. Uh, so Mason is at the lake. He's he's staying safe in the woods. The, he's not out on the dock where the eagle is eating everything. We, we see a lot of things that the eagle is eating. Mostly fish. That's what the eagle's interested in. It doesn't appear that he's eating much else. He won't eat the beavers, which is sad. The beavers are gone, the trappers came along and they're gone. Um, so we don't have those beavers out by our dock building a dam anymore. Uh, what else? Amanda's moved out, she loves her apartment. Um, I've been super busy with uh, looking for cats, um, taking care of Sadie. And 
I've cut some trees down out here. It's full swing in summer and I want to be outside a lot. And so I'm not editing as many videos. Uh, that's because there's no mosquitoes and the temperature is perfect out here. But pretty soon the mosquitoes will hatch. They haven't yet, thank goodness. But when they do hatch and there's tons of mosquitoes and the heat is getting too hot, then I'll probably be inside the house editing some more. But yeah, that's that's the news. It's kind of sad, but it's also kind of interesting because Mason is doing what he wants to do. He's doing it at the lake and not here in the big city. So is he safe out there? Well, that's up to him, I guess. Uh, we're going to try and get him back. We're going to continually coax him. Maybe Kate could get Rolo to round him up. I, I would hate to... We don't want to tell Rolo to chase the cat because Rolo doesn't know it's Mason. We don't know if Rolo would chomp down thinking it was a predator in his yard. So we don't want to sick Rolo after the cat. Rolo's a great big German Shepherd and he's got a very powerful job. So we're not going to like sick Rolo after the cat. But he is, Rolo is paying attention when he hears noise in the woods, he, he barks. And that's, that will chase Mason away right away. So it, it's not really working. Uh, but Kate will keep trying. Maybe Amanda's out there too. Maybe they'll get lucky and harness him or call him in. Maybe he'll come up to the door like he sometimes does. And uh, we'll welcome him back in. But Mason is working toward being an outdoor cat. Um, I'm at a point in my life where I'm thinking with this cat, just like our last cat, Sammy, which we had several years ago, he insisted on being outside. We finally just gave in and let him pass through whenever he wanted. And he was a, an extremely happy cat. My biggest two problems with doing that automatically is, number one, there's fleas on the, on the rabbits around here, at least in the city here. Maybe out at the lake, there's not, no fleas, maybe. And then the bigger problem is there's predators. Now, in our yard, we have a horned owl living in this area. His evidence almost every week. He's eating things all the time. So the owl would for sure catch Mason and eat him. I'm positive of that. I have no doubt that Mason, even though we have a lot more creatures at the lake, a lot more coyotes is my biggest fear out there, but we don't have the horned owl, which actually hunts our yard all the time because he catches things. There's so much out here to catch for an owl. At the lake, Mason has the cover of the thick woods and the pine trees, and so, and he climbs them. He, he is walking up and going right up the trees. Uh, he's loving life at the lake. I think he's on vacation, actually. So, anyway, that no worries. We're gonna we're gonna have Mason. He's sticking around. Um, we may just have to shift gears and let him be an outdoor cat at the lake. So, stay tuned. We'll figure it out. Here's a thunderstorm for you. Just to break the tension and give you something to look at. I thought it was beautiful.